Hi, I'm Dr. Nick Buecher here at North Seattle Community College, and in this video we're going to talk about using the Bunsen burner. The Bunsen burner can be found in the cupboard at the side of the classroom, and you'll also find strikers there. The cupboard's labeled with Bunsen burners and strikers. When you take the striker, you want to make sure that it creates sparks when you squeeze it. If it doesn't create sparks, the flint's probably worn out, and you should grab another striker. You want to connect the Bunsen burner to the gas jack located at the front of your workstation. You want to make sure the valve at the base of the Bunsen burner is turned on at least a few turns. And when you're ready to ignite the Bunsen burner, you turn on the gas, step back, and use the striker to ignite it. You may need to adjust the flame size or the amount of air going to the flame. The flame size can be adjusted up or down using the valve at the base of the Bunsen burner. And you can adjust the air right here. If the flame's kind of skipping, it sounds like it's going out, it's probably getting too much air. You want to adjust the air supply, rotate it clockwise to turn down the air supply. And if the air, if there's too little air, you're going to see a big orange flame. We'll demonstrate that later in the video and how to handle that. One thing I'd like to talk about is the different parts of the flame. So let's dim the lights and zoom in so we can get a better view of, better view of, this, of this flame. So hopefully in the video you're able to see the flame has two parts to it. We have a darker blue uh, outer flame and then a small bright blue uh, inner sort of point of flame in the middle. So depending on what you're using the Bunsen burner for, you might want to use the different parts of the flame. For example, if you're trying to ignite a strip of magnesium, you want a very hot, intense flame, you want to hold it right in the tip of the bright blue part of the flame. That's the hottest part. If you're trying to apply a more diffuse heat uh, to a larger item, not trying to ignite it, like for example, if you're trying to dehydrate a, a sample, dry it out, then you might want to use the upper part of the flame where it's cooler and more diffuse. When you're done with the Bunsen burner and you're ready to turn it off, simply turn the gas valve off and it will go out. An alarming situation that you might encounter is if you ignite the Bunsen burner and the air supply has been turned off. If we turn on the gas and ignite the Bunsen burner, we see that we have this very large bright orange flame. And depending on how the valve at the base is adjusted, the flame can be very large. If this happens, don't be alarmed. All you need to do is turn the air adjuster counterclockwise to adjust the amount of air going to the flame. You'll see the flame becomes smaller and blue, and you'll eventually see that small cone of bright blue flame in the middle, like we discussed earlier in the, in the video. So again, if you get that very large orange flame, don't be alarmed. It simply means the air has been turned off. You must adjust the air back up. I hope you found this video tutorial helpful. As always, should you encounter some problems, please talk to your lab instructor. This is Dr. Nick, signing off.